So folks, I have well and truly mucked up and I'd rather come clean about it. Our brand new shower is leaking. Hiya folks and welcome back to the show and uh, I'm in my civvies because I'm literally about to go off on holiday and I've just discovered that the shower that to be fair we fitted it what was it a year and a half ago or something like that but I've discovered it's leaking in this corner here and I have made a ridiculous mistake so just to show you how this is all put together and my rookie mistake we've got moisture resistant board here and I've also primed it to give it a bit of extra protection the shower tray itself's on a full mortar bed on top of this I used that no more leaks tape that Roger Bisbee likes because he's been doing this for a lot longer than me and knows what he's talking about I'm not calling you old Roger you will notice actually on the corner where we've got the problem I ran out of tape and I don't know if you remember but it was a really hot summer when I was fitting this and I couldn't get the backing tape off the no more leaks tape and I had all sorts of problems with it but that's not what's caused this issue and then you can see I did all of the tiling grouted it all up I had all sorts of problems with the grout because as you can see the grout on that side is a different color to the grout on that side it's actually settled down now but uh, the grout was going off in about five minutes I had terrible problems with it so I think at this point I was probably losing my rag a little bit what I should have done here once the grout had dried of course is put silicon along these two back edges but as you can clearly see here I've now got the vertical rails fitted and I haven't siliconed these back edges first oh man what have I done I think what I've ended up doing and this isn't an excuse there's no excuse for this whatsoever but I think what I've ended up doing I dry fitted the rails to check that everything kind of fit and then I've probably got distracted by something probably because I was doing filming and as I say all the other problems that I was having and it had simply dropped out my brain that I hadn't siliconed these back edges so I've then come back from whatever I've been distracted by continued fitting everything and then I did the silicon afterwards once the screen was all in at this point I was stressing because we were literally just about to move into this house and I had to get a functional bathroom up and running so I probably just thought stuff it I'll run with the risk that I I didn't seal it in behind those edges I can't remember and I'm paying the price now so it's that corner there that we've got the problem and I just noticed that the skirting board was blown a little bit um, I'm not sure if you can see but the MDF has swelled and you can see moisture is getting in at the bottom there and if we take a look from inside the shower we do have a bit of a problem with the silicon at the bottom but I don't think that's what's causing the problem. I think water's getting in higher up, kind of behind here. But I'll just run the shower and you can kind of see when I run the shower and point it in this corner, there's a little bit of water coming through here, but the silicon looks okay. But the more worrying thing is that water seems to be coming through the back of the trim at the corner there. So there's definitely water coming through here. So that's not great. Don't know if you can see, but just there. So that's coming through this little gap here. That shouldn't happen because any water coming through there should go back into the tray. But then if I blast it higher up, There's definitely water somehow getting around the back there because you can see there's a little pool of water just there and it's gone all the way down that edge and it's now just kind of sitting there at the bottom so that's really not good that needs sorted out. So I'm just going to dry this all up get it as dry as I possibly can but can see definitely where the problem is. I'll get it all nice and dry in this corner as well and then I'm just going to scrape away some of this silicon here because that's going to have to go anyway and on the outside I'm going to just scrape this little bit out because again, we know that that hasn't taken very well. 
for whatever reason yeah that's completely loose from the frame it just hasn't taken to the bottom of the frame very well Right, that'll do for now. I'm going on holiday. Ooh, it's cold up here, mate. I am at two and a half thousand meters, so uh, let's get down this mountain. So I'm back from holiday, no broken limbs, not from me anyway, and this has had a good chance to dry out now because the next stage of what I'm going to do to fix this is going to be, you know, I don't particularly want to take the entire shower tray down because that's going to be a big job, but what I can potentially do is do a bit of a retro repair at this back edge. And my plan of attack is going to be, and I hope this is going to work, but my plan of attack is going to be to try and take this back rail out just slide it up and then we'll clean everything out at the back here and hopefully we'll be able to get some silicon behind that joint fingers crossed Now, obviously, when you're doing any kind of job like this, which can be dangerous, you need to do your own kind of risk assessment of what can potentially go wrong. And I know that even once I've got these screws out, this rail is still held in by silicon on the other side, and the bottom of this glass screen is siliconed in, and this screen is held into the corner support, so there's really, this can't go anywhere. This glass section can't go anywhere, but um, yeah, never say never. As I say, you've just got to work out your own risks on stuff like this. It's not ideal, but welcome to the world of property maintenance and the kind of jobs that you might be uh, saddled with. This one being a one completely of my own making. Right, this might have to be a plan B job because I've cut that silicon all the way down but it ain't, that is not budging. <laughs> so there's no screws, the silicon's completely cut and that will not shift. So I think my only option is going to be to try and remove this silicon. I don't really want to have to get it wet, that's one of the things. So let's just see if I can get the knife behind there a little bit. I think what's happened is some of the silicon when I've applied this has got behind the rail and it's effectively glued the rail onto the wall and it's just not budging. So we'll see. We'll work it out. So you can probably see why this isn't the route I particularly wanted to go down because it made a right mess of the old silicon down here. So all of that's going to have to be cleaned off. But what I'm trying to do is get my scraper right behind here. You see this, this bit of silicon behind this rail stopping it from moving. So I'm running this all the way up the back of it just to try and detach it from the wall really. I'm confident we're going to be able to do this because if I can't, we've got a bit of a problem on my hands. <laughs> There's a bit here, oh man, it just does not want to move. Oh, there it goes. Feel it there, look at that, there we go. That is what we're wanting all the way down. I want that loose. So 
So I've got the scraper right around the back. It's all right, I'm not damaging the tiles. All the way down. Right, moment of truth. Can we slide this upwards? Because I can't take this out completely, not without removing all of this, but I can move this as high as the ceiling. So I've got quite a bit of room to play with. Of course, I need to be really careful here not to damage the shower tray, but just being very gentle. Just levering this up. Come on, it's going. Probably be easier from the other side. That looks pretty good. I think I've got enough room to get in there. I mean, you can definitely see where the the water's been getting round the back of this joint here and just seeping around and uh, down to the skirting board. So this is the bit here that I need to sort out. Get all that cleaned out, get all that goop out. As I say, I was sure I siliconed it, but evidently not. <sighs> Right, that is about as well as I can clear this out while I've got a camera in the road because I need to get right down into this and I'm gonna get some silicon remover on it as well. Get it all really, really cleaned out and I'm gonna have to clean up this entire joint from top to bottom as well. Get all these scraggly bits of silicon off. All of that needs to go so that we'll get a nice new clean joint once I've siliconed behind here. So I've completely cleaned out all of the silicon down this edge here and along this little bit here, just up to there. I'm not taking all this out all the way along and a couple of inches that way on the back side of it or inside the shower. And the main priority at the minute is to get this joint here. So in other words, the joint between the shower tray and the tiles to get that as clean as possible so that we can put a bead of silicon behind here. And effectively what we're doing, if you imagine we're building a little dam, so we want the sides of the dam all to be lined with rubber or silicon in this instance, and that's gonna be formed all around the inside edges coming all the way past the end of the shower screen. And then on the outside, we've simply got a bead all the way around the bottom edge and up this left hand vertical edge here and that has to make contact with the silicon that goes around the back of this tile here and that forms our dam so that water can't get out of the shower. Anyway, the next stage, as you see, I've completely cleaned it out. If you want to know the, the detail of what I've used to clean it out, just watch my video about re-siliconing a shower screen. It's the same process for getting old silicon off getting it all absolutely clean, bone dry and everything, ready to put new silicon back on. Here's all the tools that I used and as you can see, quite a lot of silicon came out of this. Just remember the three golden rules here, as per usual, silicon doesn't stick to wet things. You should try and avoid silicon sticking to silicon, although we're gonna have to do a bit of a joint here, but that should be okay and the internal joint as well, that should be all right. 
but generally speaking, get as much of the old silicon off as you possibly can. And you also want to make sure that it's completely grease free as well. So completely degreased any silicon remover that you've used, make sure that's all completely removed. And that's where I use uh, methylated spirits to give it a final wipe down and make sure that it's completely, absolutely immaculate. As you saw, I've given this a bit of a hit with a hairdryer as well, and it just gets any remaining moisture out of this joint. But because we've left it over like a week period while I was away on holiday, it should be pretty dry in there. So it's only really surface moisture from where I've been wiping the silicon remover off. So the next task for today is to run a bead of white silicon along this edge behind the shower screen here. That is gonna be very, very tricky because obviously I don't have particularly good access behind there, but it doesn't need to look pretty because you're never gonna see it because the shower screen is gonna be on top of it. But that's gonna to be today's task. And then we're gonna let that go off and dry. And then tomorrow we'll refit the rail, bring it all the way down to the bottom and do all the last bits and pieces. So I think what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna get as much of it as I can from inside the shower. And then I'll just finish it off on that outside a little bit. I think that should work pretty well. Hi, come on in, chicken. What's up, chicken? You coming in? You watching, you supervising. So it's the usual Dow 785 silicon that I'm using. Tends to be my kind of go-to. That looks pretty good there. I'm gonna head round the other side now. And by the way, don't judge, I never got round to finishing off this little detail here, this corner. Uh, kind of lucky really, because it would have been pointless. Um, but I'll tidy all that up down here once we've got this all permanently back in. But that's a pretty good bead I've got round the back of there now. It's a little bit tricky to show you and I can't really get in because the camera's in the road. So I will tidy that up a, a little bit more, but that's pretty good. I mean, water's not gonna get through that gap now. And that's the main thing. And you can see on the inside, I've got the join between the new silicon and the old silicon. Pretty much you can't really see it at all. So that should be fine. So now it's just a question of letting that go off. So I'm gonna leave that overnight and then we'll bring this vertical trim back down into the correct place, screw it in position. And then we've just got that last vertical bead of silicon to do and we're done. Right, it's the next day now. The silicon at the bottom there has dried. So we're now ready to push this rail back down into its final position. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed that bit works. So I've popped a bit of fresh silicon into all of the screw holes that are in the tiles. Again, just think of a dam and 
these holes through the wall are effectively like a hole in your dam so you've got to seal them up and then I've just got this last screw into the frame itself down the bottom here that's it and then I'm just going to give everything a bit of a clean up with methylated spirits and then we're ready to do the final little beads of silicon now I don't particularly recommend putting silicon in places where the manufacturer doesn't tell you to put silicon and in this case with this shower they tell you not to silicon this inside edge but because I know that we've had a problem with water getting behind this edge specifically next to the tiles I am going to put a very very thin bead down here but remember we're creating a dam and this is already dammed on the other side. Once I do that vertical bead down the outside edge, technically water shouldn't be able to go anywhere. And the key thing is, is that water can always get inside this frame and you need to allow a place where water can get back out. So I'm not going to silicon around the bottom edge, but I'm just going to do a very, very thin strip down this inside edge. Just kind of belt and braces, but uh, yeah, I don't particularly advise doing that but this is kind of my risk because I know where the water is getting in but it's tiny it's a tiny 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 thin bead that I'm doing here you can barely even see it so it's just down that edge there it's literally a micro bead you can't see it at all the main bit that can be kind of problematic is around the grout lines so it's just making sure that water can't get behind there really but as I say it's not recommended so unless you've got a problem that you're trying to solve which I have here then don't silicon bits that the manufacturer doesn't tell you to silicon So folks, it's the next day. All the silicon has set and fingers crossed, everything is fixed. I've given everything a nice clean down inside the shower so everything is spick and span. The final thing to do is to test whether or not we've actually sorted this problem. We are looking good, bone dry, not a drop of water coming through that now. I've popped a bit of primer on the skirting board at the bottom there. It hadn't swelled up too much and as it's dried out over the last week and a half or whatever, it's actually contracted quite a lot. So luckily an easy repair there, caught it just in time. And I'm gonna leave this little side edge here open just for the minute. I am gonna put a little trim over that at some point and sort it out. But for the minute, I'm gonna leave that open at the back just to keep an eye that fingers crossed water isn't coming from somewhere else. I don't see how it possibly can. Remember the dam, it's all completely dammed off all the way along here, both edges all the way up there and internally as well. I'm not really a big fan of doing a join from new silicon to old silicon, but needs must and you really can't see it both externally and internally. You just can't see the join. So folks, I hope you found that useful. It was a stupid mistake on my behalf, but hopefully you've learned something from it. And you know, the moral of this story is don't rush. The whole problem here was because I was rushing on the job, trying to get everything ready for moving in, and I forgot a really critical bit. If I'd done this for a customer, it would have cost us best part of two or three days of my time going backwards and forwards to sort this problem out at no charge to the customer, obviously. And look, we all make mistakes. Sometimes you just have to address it and sort it out. Luckily, I don't think I've ever made a mistake like this for a customer, at least not that they've told me. But hands up, I'm owning it. I ballsed up. As per usual, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a quick like and a comment down below. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. Give us a quick follow on Instagram and Twitter. I'm up and running on Twitter again, Gosforth Andy on Twitter. For now, folks, as per usual, be nice to each other, look after each other, and we shall see you next time. Tidy bye.